Right, in this video, I'm going to show you how we create our own mountain maples. Most of the maples you see in here are actually produced on the nursery. Now, this is a typical example of what I'm about to do. If you look at this, this is still in a training pot. This maple has been dug up from the ground and put in this pot for the last three years. And what I did then, this maple, can you see, it's about two inches thick in diameter with beautiful base and it's getting a new leader. This maple must have been six to eight feet tall. I cut it down to about a foot which is about 30 centimeters and we grew the new leader. So the rest of the top was either air laid or we just threw it away. Now what I'm going to do now is to go through some of our maples that we have growing here they are in pots and I'm going to cut it and I'll show you where we cut it and how we develop it from there. I will also show you some others which are more um, developed and uh, you will learn a lot of secrets from that. Let's go to another area. So this is another one. Can you see the lovely shape? And again, what we've done, we've cut the leading shoot off and grew a new leader. So all these maples are done in exactly the same way. This one as well. So this one may look tall, but all these shoots one meter long have grown since the end of March, early April. And this is only the third week in July. And look at it. I will show you from this stage. I will take you to another stage. Now let's show you some more. This is another one where we've cut it down from a big tree. You can see the beautiful roots there. And this is the new leader. So this grew last year. These grew this year. So if I don't want to let the shoots grow too long because the leader is coming on very nicely. Uh, I will probably leave the choice of two possible leaders but just to give you some idea when I pull these long shoots off you will see the bonsai straight away so that is how the bonsai is going to develop that's the new taper there new taper there two new tapers this one again lots of lovely shoots I may continue growing these as sacrificial branches to thicken the trunk, so I won't tinker with that. So it was cut over here. If I can show you the detail, if Jack comes close. We did several cuts. There was one cut made there, another cut made there. You see how it's calloused. Another cut made there, that was done two years ago. And this was cut last year, last year, and this is this year's growth. So all that has been cut, so I can cut it back to there. That is as tall as I want the maple to grow. I will shorten some of these. And if I want to develop a thicker trunk, I let these grow as sacrificials. And there you are, you can see the bonsai in all its shape. So this is how we do it. And now I'm going to show you how we're going to cut down these six and eight foot tall trees. I'm not going to air layer them because I've got too many. There's no point keeping on air layering and air layering. I will only air layer the ones which are rare, like that Shishi Gashira, you can see we've done some air layering there because Shishi is a very rare species and they're better on their own roots, so I air layer that. But all these have been developed in the same way. Now this is a bigger one using the same principle. This is a Benichidori and you can see this lovely trunk. This is a sacrificial branch. That's where it was cut to develop a new leader. And this is how we are going to develop the future of the tree. I don't want to let too many of these grow, otherwise I'll get inverse taper. And I'll let these branches grow. This, as I said, is a sacrificial. This will come off eventually. And this is going to be a big 70 centimeter, one meter tall bonsai. So we are now going into the field to show you some of the things that we are going to cut down. So here is our stock of maples that were dug up from the field and they're grown in pots ready to be made into bonsai. Some of these taller ones are sold as garden trees. Not all of them, but some will be sold as garden trees. Others we will just continue to uh, develop as bonsai. 
uh, sometimes the tops of the trees die so this would make a very nice tall bonsai or garden tree so I probably have to cut this off sometimes the tops of the maples do die so I don't uh, hide everything that has sometimes may have gone wrong so this is another one being developed as a bonsai can you see that's where we cut it and this is the new leader so this is a new leader here so that's how this one will be developed as a bonsai so just methodically going through all these trees see like this one was like a twin trunk so this was cut quite some time ago so this is going to be developed into another bonfire with a very interesting trunk it may not look that interesting but believe you me it certainly is now this is the typical sort of tree that I'm going to cut down look at it this is every bit five foot six or six foot high now what I want to really concentrate on is not so much the full uh, height of the tree I will have to what we say bite the bullet and make a decision I have cut once over here you can see there was a cut made there and a new leader grew there now I don't want to keep growing this forever and a day so the next cut is going to be somewhere here it's still going to be quite a tall bonsai so that is going to be cut. I'm going to cut closer. These falco secateurs are really sharp. And there you are. You've got a new leader there. There's a new leader going there. I can cut it there. And by doing that, I'm going to force new branches to grow here. So this bonsai is going to be this tall. And so we go on. You can see that there's so much material here. Now this could be a very interesting, like a twin trunk bonsai. Already got a twin trunk. But this I'll probably keep that tall and just put it in a bigger pot to get a nice twin trunk bonsai. I don't want to cut it shorter than that because this will look quite nice as a tree that shape. Now let's find some more tall ones which we can cut. Uh, now this is a typical one, typical tall tree, very leggy. I don't want to layer that, I could easily layer it. It was cut there, cut there, didn't go any further, so I'm going to cut it there. Sometimes it seems a shame to cut all that off, but as I say, at some point you have to take a decision. Now this tree, although there are no shoots coming here, believe you me, I'm going to cut it here. It is going to sprout again. What a waste, huh? So, and because it's the third week in July, very hot, I'm going to seal it so that it doesn't lose moisture. I'm now going to take it back into our tunnel or greenhouse to force the new growth to come. So that is how we make that bonsai. So that one is done. Now let's look at this one. Now this one is growing very interestingly. Let's take it out of the pot. You can see the beautiful nibari. So although they're in pots, they still grow at quite a good rate. Now, for some reason this has died, but this is very convenient that it has died. But the rest of the tree is growing, so let's get the dead off. And now, I don't want it that tall, so I will probably cut it there. I don't cut right back. For instance, a tree of this shape, you see very nice trunk. The tree will eventually come up to here. But if I cut close, it may, may die further back. So I cut gradually so that it will bud from here. And then when this buds, I will then cut it lower down. So this is how it's kept. Now I noticed that this was really a grafted tree. Can you see the different types of leaves? You see the lovely color. This is a triple colored thing. And this new leader which is growing is probably the understock. So I'm not sure what to do about that, but it's a very interesting situation. If this develops strongly, I may de develop this as the future tree. Now let's go through some of these. These are all trees that we've tackled in the past, but we need to just refine. Now this is another one, which I think someone reserved this. 
all the ones with the red labels are ones that have been reserved by customers but they never came back for it anyway there's a dead leader that i can take off and this is going to be quite an interesting tree again i don't need it that tall don't need it that tall how easy is that so you can see how the future tree is going to develop very interesting nibari and you must admit it's already looking like a bonsai so these have all been worked on at some stage now this is another typical tall tree if you look around they're all very tall but some have been pruned already unfortunately with a large nursery like this where we have thousands of plants on the go we can't get around to weeding everything but i don't apologize for it because as long as the main plant is growing that's all that matters so let me tackle the weeds I'm showing everything because at least you get a flavor of what we do. I don't want to just show you the good bits. I'll show you the bad bits and all. Look at the weeds in here. Those are all weed roots. That's not the maple root. That's called bindweed, you know, the convolvulus. It's an absolute pest. And it will eventually strangle and kill the tree. I may take it into the greenhouse to take some of these weeds off. If we lived in a perfect world, if we lived in the Garden of Eden, you may not get weeds, but we don't live in a perfect world. Look at this, look at the weeds. How this poor maple is growing, I don't know. But at least the maple is still alive. Look at it, lovely tall tree. I'm going to give it some intensive care treatment. So with a tree like this, tall tree, about five foot high, we don't need all that. So off it comes. I could either cut it there and make it sprout, but just to be on the safe side, I'll cut it a little higher over there. You notice I'm wearing the left hand glove because these saws are so damn sharp. I could easily cut my finger off. So there you are, I could have cut it there but I prefer to cut it here in case it dies back. And now I'll put it in intensive care and make it grow strong. We use the back greenhouse as an intensive care or a house where we force the growth. That way we get like two seasons growth in one year because it's very warm and humid in there. So I get a lot of growth. Now that's another interesting tree here. A lot of people already earmark it, but if they don't come back for it, say someone reserved this tree. Now, tall tree like this, what a shame that I have to cut it. But the interesting part is here. This is where the interest lies. So I can either cut it there or cut it here. But just for uh, safety, I will cut it higher up because there's always a risk that it may die further down. So, well, let's do this. Rather than cut even lower down, let's, there's a new leader there. So cut this. And then cut this little bit of sap. And then when the shoots grow here, I'll cut it down further there. So I'm doing this in a couple of stages. This, by the way, is Yukon. For those of you who are maple lovers, you will know that Yukon is a very, very nice tree. I've got a few here. These are all Yukon. They keep this lovely lime green color throughout the year. And in the autumn, they turn a beautiful butter yellow. And this already I did this last year. I cut the shoot off. So there is a new set of leaders here. And that's the bonsai coming along. Yukon, so that's what we did to that last year. So all these tall trees, even this one, 
I know I get a lot of money for it as a garden tree. I may spare that one to go as a garden tree. But generally speaking, all these tall trees, we will have to at some stage bite the bullet. Okay, now this is a very good example. Look at this one. This is so tall, isn't it? But all this growth has grown this year. So I've had one meter growth. Look at these long shoots. These are all this year's growth. So maples do grow fast, uh, in case you didn't know. But this tree is very interesting. If we come and have a closer look at it, look at that beautiful S-shaped tree there. So this was the new leader. I cut it off there, so the new leader's coming there. Perhaps I don't need it to grow any taller. So let's cut it off there. Now this is what we call the sacrificial. I think by now you soon realize what this term sacrificial means. Those who are into bonds, I will know what sacrificial is. Sacrificial is simply a branch that is grown to thicken the trunk at the base. Once the work is done, that sacrificial branch will be sacrificed. We won't need it. So that is typical sacrificial branch, very low down over here. So that's going to thicken the base there. And when its job is done, I will cut it off. But I don't want to be in a rush to cut it off because that is what is going to make the nice nebari there. So that is another one in the making. Sometimes trees die for no reason, as they say. Ah, this is not completely dead, but you can see sometimes the tops of the trees die. But as long as a new shoot continues to grow, I don't need to get worried about it. So this is some form of red, either an actro or something. So it's got a nice shape there. And I will just trim it back a little bit. By trimming it, I'm going to force new growth. So that's going to be forced to make into a bonsai. And so, and we go on and on. That's another typical one here. Let's take it through that. Look at that. So this is growing, lovely trunk there, lovely base. Now these have not been hurried at all. They have taken years to reach to this stage. So what do I do with this one? The base is beautiful. Look at that beautiful base over here. So this is a lovely base. And this is growing in this direction. So I can cut this off. Normally I would have air laid this bit and get another tree. But as I say, I've got so many trees. I can't spend the rest of my life worrying about air layering everything. As I say, I shouldn't be too greedy. There comes a point where we need to take a decision and get on with it. Otherwise, we'll always have semi-trained trees and nothing finished. So this is how I'm going to tackle most of these in this row. I've got Padma Priya here and he and I are going to work on this and we'll show you snippets as we go along. Thank you. That was Jack filming. So I have a very interesting thick maple here that we are going to cut. This tree, as you can see with Parmipia standing there, is a good four to almost five foot high, but we have chopped it in several places. I have a feeling this was an air layering at some point because air layerings don't have massive thick roots. And this may have been an air layering done about 10 years back. Now it's grown that tall. The decision is what is the next stage to do? As you can see with those three branches there, this can cause inverse taper. It's already swelling there in the middle. So that is not a good sign. So we've got to bite the bullet and take a decision as to which will be the future leader. Uh, what do you think, Padma? I'm thinking the middle one, Peter. Middle one, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, I think the middle one. Now the one going to the left is too much like a windswept and the one to the right is too thick for a leader. And also we did think w whether we should air layer this thick piece because what a shame, isn't it? That piece is at least two to three inches thick, but it's not particularly nice as uh, Pat says, so we will get rid of it. So with the saw, we will cut over here and cut over there and seal it. See, we don't cut absolutely flush to the trunk 
rather we will cut it a little further away from the junction so that it'll give it a chance to die because if you cut it too close you may cause the entire top to die so there is some logic in how we do it so when that dies back we can always carve it or whatever and then this bit we will that you can cut closer uh, okay we'll cut that and then the main thing is to seal the cuts seal the cuts and it will now force growth to happen from lower down so that is that one done now sometimes we do lose trees there are one or two i notice are dead now these have all been done in the past isn't it but yes. you see yeah we did this road a couple now years. this one perhaps see we cut it there we could probably come down a little bit lower now couldn't we yeah to here yeah there. yeah to there okay. and let's see it should be able to get through lop it where did we go peter here yeah, yeah that junction yeah Now it forces the side shoots to grow lower down. So here we have a very interesting uh, mountain maple, Asa palmatum. And as you can see, the roots, there are no visible surface roots, but I'll tell you why. This was an air layering I may have done about say five, 10 years ago. And you can still see the sphagnum moss that was used for the air layering. So these maples that don't have thick surface roots are all our air layers. In fact, if we tease a little bit, we can soon see. So it just shows how you can create from air layering and get thick maples very fast. I didn't have to wait ages. They were just an air layered thick branch. And in five years, I've got to this stage where I've got lots and lots of options. So you can still see this is this all is the really original this is really sphagnum sharp. moss. Okay, we we'll, can always deal with the nebari at a later stage. So what I'm trying to say is that when you air lay, you get very compact root. Whereas if you dig field grown trees, they usually have very thick roots and you don't get the compact root easily and you can create better nibari from air layered trees. Okay, so there you are. You can still see the sphagnum moss that I used. There, all that is the original sphagnum moss from the air layering. You can clearly see it, so I'm not telling a lie. Okay, so right, that I think is enough. We can't get at the base because I'm sure there are some nice potential roots there. See, the roots have gone round and round as it came out of the bag from the air layer. But the main thing is that the tree is growing strong. Now, looking at this tree, there are so many upward growing branches. And those are the branches which will provide the potential uh, leader. So we rot rotate the tree. There is this one, which is the potential leader. If you touch that one, turn it back. See, that is the potential leader. If you go lower down, turn it around. Now, this one also, this one is another potential leader. So if we look at the tree from the full frontal, this gives quite interesting uh, taper. So there are so many choices, and if I wanted to be greedy, I could air layer it there and get a nice stumpy tree, but I won't. But I think, uh, if you turn around and if you tell me, Padman Priya, what do you think is the best leader? I'm kind of wondering whether if you came in through here and used this. To get a straight yeah. tall tree? Yeah. That is possible. That's also possible. Yeah. Uh, so that is one option. So uh, there are now three options, isn't it? If we look at it with this as the leader, that's also possible. Definitely. It's got a nice curve as well. Yeah. But if we look at the top, uh, other top one, this one, this has also got a very nice curvy yeah. look to it, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I see where huh? you're going now. Is yeah. that the best, yeah, you reckon? I think so, yeah. I okay, think so we cut it from there. That is yeah. the best. Yeah. Okay, do that, do that. with the saw.
just a straight cut will do. We don't need to make sloping cut. Okay, now because we don't want inverse taper, the one that we chose not to use as the leader, this thick one, we should cut off over there. Okay. Uh, Again with the saw or the loppers. Yeah, I've got the loppers. Just to double check, I'm taking this one. Yeah, that one. As close as possible, and then we seal it. There you go, all that's gone. And I think these ones we can shorten a little bit. We won't take it right back there, but we shorten here to give it a chance to grow in case there's any dieback. And these, if we shorten a little bit, that will also force all the goodness towards the back. That's it. Yeah, all the tips, if we take off, then it'll force growth. So we got a very nice curvy, curvy trunk. So everything is about trunk. Once we get a nice trunk line, then the future of the bonsai will be nice. This also shorten. So that's how we make our thick trunk bonsai maples. So we're going to force it in this greenhouse. So that's another one done. Now this is a very interesting tree. This is a deshojo that we've been growing in the field for quite a few years. And uh, it's produced a lot of branches, but we've been chopping it back uh, over the years. And this is where we've got, it's a grafted tree, you can see the graft, but it's a massive trunk over here. Uh, some of the branches have died, but the main thing is that it's got interesting trunk line. And we are now, let's get all the dead ones off. Clearly, can cut close to the trunk, even that is dead. We'll cut all the dead ones right back to the trunk and seal it. Maples can be trained in any style, a broom style, informal upright, uh, formal upright. And uh, like some people have commented, they don't have to be trained like a pine. They can have the branches sprouting slightly upwards. That very lowest one also is dead, that can come off. Oh, that one is completely dead. This can come you think so? Off. Yeah, it is completely Sorry, dead. Okay, don't worry too much about that. We probably cut everything back. <laughs> <laughs> See, sometimes you grow the things and then you cut all the branches out. What a waste, but that is what bonsai is all about. Now, we've got to decide which is the front and which is the back. If we rotate this tree around, we can soon get an idea as to which is front and back from the Nebari alone. Well, that's probably the nicest. The yeah, Nimbari is very mm, nice very from good, there, excellent. very nice. Uh, now, I don't mind this branch on the right going out because like my split trunk maple, it does that. But this one is clouding yeah. the front of the tree. So if you can very carefully with the saw, get rid of this bit. Yeah, okay. That would then give us a clue as to where we are going. Don't worry about the cuts because they callous very quickly. And you notice we are pruning at the height of summer. I keep emphasizing that it's perfectly okay to cut deciduous trees like maples in the summer because whatever cuts you make, they seal or heal themselves very quickly. So this, in fact, is a good time of the year to make the cuts. Leave it like that rather than go too close because it can die back to the main trunk and then we can deal with it later on because this tree has got a long journey ahead. So this branch going to the right is okay. Yeah. Uh, this one we can shorten. Shorten all of these and then we will get some ideas to what the future shape of the tree will look like. These we shorten there. Okay, that's perfect. Leader there. Okay, that dead one we can take out completely. Now these are we shortened there. Shorten much more. I think that's got to come back to there, Peter, because it's kind of doing the same job as those two. Yeah, yeah. that can come off completely. Yeah. Let the front one grow and cut it back yeah. to about there. 
Now this long one can shorten it here, that's it, shorten it. Now we can get some idea. You see, this is what the tree will look like in the future. Already you can see the shape of the tree. So this is the future direction of this day shoujo. It's going to be a beautiful day shoujo. So this is perfectly acceptable design for the day shoujo. With a nice dome shape, this would be perfect. So you can see that you don't have to worry about the dead branches. You'll keep getting new branches anyway. Now all we have to do is seal the cuts. And I'm going to feed heavily and grow it in this greenhouse. There you go.